So, I mean, there's so many people right now that are not doing what they love because they're worried about what other people think. When you're playing a different game than everybody else, peer pressure doesn't even have a shot on you. It's tougher when you're 15 as you're building your self-esteem and, and your foundation of your life. When you're 51 or when you're 91, you're gonna be stunned how little you care. And, and this includes your parents and your siblings and even your children. This is an intense thing. This is a very intense thing. And you have to love yourself first and feel good and complete with yourself first. I would do what I did as a 15 year old, which is start building those skills and not listen to your parents and not listen to your teachers and not listen to your friends. Respect it. But don't let anybody, anybody impose their way on you. It's you. You're with yourself. And you've got to make yourself happy first. Who are you scared to fail in front of? The reason so many of you are not doing what you want to do is you're scared to fail in something. You're scared that your brother will judge you, your wife, your girlfriend, your husband, and most scary, your mom or your dad. You need to eliminate that and or own that fear and put yourself in a position to succeed. Because with all of this, with all of this, we are now in the greatest era. For the first time ever, with no fucking money, with no damn connections, this can put you on the map. If you're good enough, if you are good enough to be up here, to make bling bling, if you are good enough, nobody's stopping you. Not fucking Donald Trump, not the fucking Russians, nobody. If you are a minority, if you are a female, if you are a transgender, if you're a fucking alien, The market doesn't give a If you make the best you will win. Do you know how sucky it was to be a nerd 20 years ago? But now the market is rewarding nerds and now they're rock stars. When you're thoughtful, like, I think one of the things that people like struggle with is actually being very real with themselves. The difference between being you know, the difference between understanding who you are versus who you wish you were. And, and I think that's something that I'm always very fascinated by when I have a meeting like this. Like, what kind of read do you have on yourself? And how, like, you know, I think I would struggle a lot if I didn't really genuinely know who I was. And, it, and then once you know who you are, you get more comfortable with what you're up to. So like if I asked you right now, and I think it ebbs and flows, when you're 28, when you're 32, when you're 57. Like if I asked you right this second, like what do you want to happen and like what would you say? People are fronting for people that aren't going to be the impact on them. I met with a kid for 20 minutes today, loved him. He's got it. But he's doing, but thank you. But he doesn't, but he's doing something that's gonna hurt him. And I told him, I said look, you're doing something that is not going to win. I would eliminate you from consideration to do business with based on this behavior other than I don't think I'm shit and I shouldn't be judging people but most of the majority of my contemporaries are doing that. I'm just confused by the behavior of the current system because so much of it is facade, so much of it is short term, so much of it is fake and, and I don't know, I, I, I just know how I got here today. I know how I got the luxury and the enormous, enormous feeling of, of admiration and it came from tried and true and it comes from tried and true for everybody. And what we do is we sit around and look at the .000001% of a guy that creates Instagram or a guy that creates Facebook or Elon Musk and we start mapping towards these anomalies yet 99.99999% of people that have been successful, it took them 20, 30, 40 years, tried and true, hard work. And so I try to impose on you here today, my friends, through sheer will, trying to force it down your throat, that first and foremost, your intent needs to be pure. If you want to build a good business and if you want to give back to the world, then that's what you actually have to do. You know, you're not going to trick, right? And, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just very, very, very passionate about this because we're living through the greatest era that human beings have ever lived through. And I am not confused to the macro-political issues that we're living through. 
and I understand all the scenarios that we're living through across the globe. It's just that humans have never had it better. Like your life is better than your great, great grandparents. Like, you know, there's a lot of shit going on with pol- political presence and things of that nature, yet it's still better than if the black plague was running through us right now. Like, we, we are so fortunate. The fact that you're even at this conference puts you at this, such a small percentage of people in the world. We have 7.4 billion people in this world and you have it so good. I am so grateful. I am so grateful, right? I'm so aware of what's actually happening here. And I don't mean for me, I mean for all of you. And so I can't wrap my head around wasting the one at bat we have. Unless somebody here has got some real interesting data, we don't come back. And you know what? I'm super pumped that I ended up being a human being. It's much more fun than being an elephant. And so if you take into account the ridiculousness and utter quadruple miracle that it is that you're even sitting here in a human and have all this opportunity that you were a human during this era and you're not willing to deploy the patience and the work ethic and the tried and true that it takes to live. You know how many people here want to be a millionaire? Do you know how rare that is? Have you run the math? You have this enormous audacity. You have this enormous audacity yet you're not putting in the work to get you there because you think somehow you've been tricked by yourself or somebody else that there's some system, that there's some fucking shortcut. There's no fucking shortcut. You've gotta put in the work, lots of it. And that comes at the expense of golfing all the time. And that comes at the expense of going to every damn event. And it definitely comes at the expense of watching one more motivational video and three more books and seven more pot. You have to do. Doing is the game. You know, listen, this is back to do you know yourself or do you aspire to be something you might actually not be? This is the toughest question of it all, my man. I mean, if you want to be respected and really known, show show the up. Are you fucking kidding me with a week, going a week without doing something? You know, I don't know how much into my content you are, but I always say nobody you've ever met got there without the hard work. Nobody you know. It's just real. You know, do you know how insane Daily V and the Snapchat stories has been to everybody? They didn't realize how hard I was going at it. You can't believe how many, you can't believe how many people, you know how many fucking people used to say the word luck? That, That word luck? has gone right back, like nobody has the audacity to say that to my face now, and I love it. Most of you are not doing what you wanna do with your life because you're worried about somebody else's opinion. Normally you're fucked up mom, (laughs) or you know, your spouse, or you know, somebody very close to you is fucking your up. Right, so that's awesome for me, but on the flip side, in the macro of me not giving a when somebody leaves one comment on an Instagram post of like, this guy's a scam artist, I'm like strategizing how to fix that, like it's the most important thing that has ever happened to me. Pulling from opposite directions is like a bridge, my friends. It is not something that you should be scared of. Way many, too many people think it's a contradiction, think it's a flaw. When you define what true intelligence is, it is holding opposite things in your head and allowing them to push. I love that everything is easy to me. We were having fun beforehand. I'm like, what's this thing I'm doing after my keynote? And they're laughing. They're like, you didn't read it? I'm like, I haven't read shit in 20 years. I don't need to be prepared. I stay in my lane. The reason I love doing Q&A is if I don't know the answer to your question, I'll say, I don't know the answer to your question. We are fronting. We are fronting in our society. You need to triple down, quadruple down on who you are and what you know and then you can win. When people ask me how do I produce content, one big breakthrough in my community was when about six months ago I said, you know what? You should document instead of create. It opened up so much for so many when they realized, wait a minute, right. You need to be documenting in your stories or in your vlog about the journey of becoming an entrepreneur, not claiming that you're a 21 year old life coach and pay me $5,000 a month and I'll teach you how to live. 
Fuck you. Speed. Speed wins everything. Speed wins everything. Speed is absolutely one of my two or three religions in business. Speed, fast. Everybody's too precious. You're overthinking your content. You're overthinking your decisions. You're better off doing 16 times and being right three times than not doing anything at all. You're pondering. You lack the confidence because you're worried about what people say. I like losing. That's why this is all so easy. I don't give a fuck if you said I lost. By not worrying about what other people think, it allows you to do things. By doing things, you either win or you learn from your loss and it c- creates speed. It's the absolute mental difference between the people that are executing and winning versus the people that aren't. It's the fear of others. I don't want to lose, but I'm definitely more disappointed than your opinion and your blog post about my loss. And what's cool is when you actually say f- it, then you start betting on your strengths. Do you know I was a businessman in a world where going to smart colleges was the only thing that mattered for businessmen? You were only a good businessman if you went to Harvard Business School. And then I reversed it. Like, I'm like, I'm a DNF student. Like, like I curse, I don't dress the part. I do me, and then you know what happened? The world came to me. And so, I would tell you that the best thing that you're gonna walk out of here with is something that took me a long time to really realize is if you wanna pull this off and you want people listening to you, there's only one thing, the truth. I I get everything wrong, it's just that I can't recall it because once it's wrong, I'm moving on to the next thing. Like dwelling on what you fucked up on is the quickest way for the next thing not to work. Right? Yeah. So like, so I think I do everything. I mean, you know this, this is a fun thing to say. Some people in the back know this. I was a breakout YouTube star in the first year, 2006. I decided that the right strategy was to leave YouTube completely and go to Vidler because Vidler offered me equity in their company and I've left an enormous amount of attention. I deviated from my intention thesis to do short-term economics and equity in a company and I lost. I lost, when DRock finally came in my life two years ago and we started to try to build up my YouTube for the first time, I was sitting on 40,000 user followers in a world where I could have had millions if I just stayed the course. So I make mistakes all the time. I'm reorging VaynerMedia every day because it's based on a mistake I made the prior year. I just don't give a fuck about my mistakes. Everybody else cares about your mistakes. If you're worried about your own mistakes, you've already lost. If anything besides being practical and start making money instead of losing money is what you remember from this talk this morning, please make it that you need to go to a senior citizen home and volunteer for one day. Here's what I want you to do. Spend one day at a senior citizen home and I promise you, you will leave with the following. You will leave that the scariest thing in the world, the scariest thing in the world to human beings is regret. What you will see in those 80 and 90 year olds, some will be happy and they'll be content but you will see something at scale that scares the living shit out of me. It's called regret. The amount of people that wish they did things is scary. And let me promise you something. When you're 93, it's hard to pull it off. I would say that if you're allowing your ego to get ahead of your humility and self-awareness, it's clearly gonna be in the way. I think you need to pull very hard from both sides. They both matter tremendously. And it's just, you can't believe how truthful it feels in my heart and stomach when I say I ain't shit and I agree with the kid that says I'm gonna be one of the greats. I just believe in both of them. I just do, I just do. I also think that if you're one of the great entrepreneurs of a generation, it doesn't necessarily mean you're so special. It means you were good at that craft. Like, you know, what I'm actually trying to do is be a little bit special. Nobody goes to somebody's funeral because they made $40 billion. They go to the funeral because that person did something that made them feel like they should have went to the funeral. So I'm trying to do both. And so uh, I would say that ego gets ahead of a lot of people, but I, I think it's really hard to analyze that from afar. Here's what I would say. If you aren't 100% happy, something's wrong. So start auditing everything. So, intent. Don't be full of shit because you're tricking the 90% that don't matter and you're losing equity with the 10% that do. Number two, do. You've gotta work. You feel super inspired from this weekend? You can't wait? What happens next Thursday? What happens next month? 
you have to actually work a lot. You know zero people, zero people that have built something big that haven't put in a ridiculous amount of work. And the bigger it is, the more they've worked. So many of you have your mouth way ahead of your actions. If you lack optimism, it's game over. A good one? It's true. Oh, without a doubt. Like, it's just true. Like, if you can't look for the bright side or, or look at the half glass full or be optimistic instead of pessimistic, if you can't do that, you just absolutely have no chance of winning because it's all how one synthesizes what's in front of them. You know what I mean? Like, like life's hard enough, the game's hard enough, the market's hard enough against you that if you're against yourself, that's too stacked. The deck becomes too stacked. I'm gonna struggle to the day I die of allowing yourself to look at glass half empty. I just feel like, I feel like, and now I understand, it's DNA and it's wiring and it's, if you grow up with a mother who's extremely negative, it's a really tough situation to break out of. It's just proven, I've understood. You grow up in a tough town, I get it. There's a couple of issues with that. Number one, everybody's got stuff. The problem is nobody cares. Once you understand that nobody cares and you're complaining to empty air, you start going in a little bit of a different direction. And yeah, I mean, I try to, I like putting out positivity. The small minority of people that are mad and angry and hateful and dark are much louder than the big percentage of us that are happy and excited and feel great. And because of the way technology works, they are much louder than they've ever been before. And so I feel like as somebody who's got full of bright light and happiness, that I need to start getting louder about that as well because that's the only way we're gonna come back. If that's the thing that's gonna get the loudest clap so far from this conversation, that's what we need to be focusing on. I feel more responsibility than ever as somebody who is happy and wants other people to be happy, genuinely. If you leave with anything for any of us, please take on the sense of responsibility that if you've got good and you feel good, to start sharing that content as well because the world needs more of it.